I was shocked about the, the signing of Juju. Um, and because we, we talked about how good the, the wide receiver room is as far as depth wise. And I was shocked they brought him in. I thought they probably would brought him in like maybe a week or two ago when he was first cut. But nonetheless, JD, we talked about Juju. Patriots drop him. They're paying pretty much his entirety of his contract. So I think whatever they had left was like eight mil. They're paying all eight million of it. Yeah. Chiefs yeah. get him at a bargain discount about uh, two mil. Uh, yeah, pretty much a uh, better minimum. We bring him in on that price. That's fine. Didn't break the bank at all. Mm-mm. What do you make of Juju coming back to the offense? And you have people who are saying it's a combination of insurance policy in case Rice does get suspended at some point this year. Insurance policy if Hollywood Brown's injury is a much longer injury than we anticipated. Um, but what do you, what are you making of uh, the Juju bringing him back home to Kansas City? Uh, first, you know what? Uh, welcome. Welcome back, Juju. Okay. First say that. All right. Uh, he was very successful when he was here a couple years ago, caught a lot of balls for us. Very good possession receiver, understands how to get open in zones. Does a really good job. Uh, just, just really understanding football. He has a high football IQ. Uh, he, he's always been a talented receiver. We know that, you know, when he came from Pittsburgh and then all of a sudden it didn't quite work, came to the chiefs, did well, didn't stay here, decided to go and find grass green on the other side, Marcus. We tried to sign his joker, trying to sign him. Wanted to go get some money. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, find your way back here. New England wasn't it, was it? New England wasn't the part, right? Grass wasn't necessarily green on the other side, okay? You had to find out. Welcome back, all right? Welcome back. Now, that being said, I do believe that this signing, this signing has something to do with now, this is my estimation, my opinion, uh, about some of maturity in the room, okay? Kind of a veteran receiver, all right, if you will. Uh, because you start looking on the roster, uh, the number of guys that had experience, uh, there's not a whole lot of guys. We were talking about longer than two. There ain't a whole lot of guys that have a lot of years of experience playing with the Chiefs. We just got a little bit younger. And so we got Xavier Worthy coming in. Right. And so then, of course, we had to talk about the young guys that are still on the on the team trying to figure everything out. Uh, and so I think that helps uh, mature the, the the wide receiver room, if you will. Now. Is this something that we may be hearing coming down the pipe about Rashid Rice? I don't I don't know. I don't quite I don't know But this is it remains to be seen. But. uh I find it hard to believe if they do do something during a season uh, with Rasheed Rice. But, you know, Texas and all of their laws or how they deal with things, it's a whole different situation altogether. Uh, just because the cheap, well, the, the NFL don't want to do nothing, you know, to state might want to. And so also to Roger Goodell, hey man, everything changes. We just don't quite know. Uh, but this is without a doubt a debt piece. This is something that he understands the offense. Matt Nagy loves him a lot because of the things he's able to do, like I said, to understand another offense. So I do believe this is part of what that is. I think it is depth piece, guy that is a veteran, understands with some maturity how to be a professional. He's not going to get into any type of trouble. He's doing TikTok dances and all of that. He's going to chill out. And so sometimes, I said this before, personality is very important and experience uh, in big games. And so he was very successful when he was here. That's what I think it is. So. What do you what do you think with what I just said? I agree. Um, I wonder this is something that people aren't talking about a lot, you know, because we bring him back in as far as being the veteran voice. And it's it's so interesting. I know last year he's pretty much plagued with injuries, the ankle injury, his knees are, you know, he's got some banged up ankle and knee injuries. And yeah, he was outplayed by Demario Douglas and Kendrick Bourne last year. And also, too, you talk about Belichick, you know, probably rode those guys into the ground a little bit last year. But for him being 27, it, it, his play just looks like an older player, significantly older than 27, which is just so it's, it's so bizarre in a way. And he also started his career out early in Pittsburgh, so that, and that also plays a part in it too. But I, I think I agree with what you're saying. I think what he provides as far as the intangibles – uh, yeah. far outweigh what he can do on the field at this point and being able to guy who knows the system kind of like when we brought Hartman in last year we brought a guy in who knows the system who yeah. can teach the young bucks maybe teach some nuances to Rasheed Rice that maybe Rasheed Rice is a second year guy you know and that's everyone always said Rice was taking over that Juju role now Juju's back in the building he can teach Rice some of the other things and you know Rice a far superior athlete than Juju and but 
Juju could teach him some different things that, you know, if had a ring Ken, who's been in the league for a long time, played under big Ben, played with Antonio Brown, you know, yeah. he's been around the block a little bit. He can teach these things to uh, Rashid, which I love from that point of view. Mm-hmm. My question is we're talking about the end of the, the, the receiver room, which we'll get to your uh, depth chart. I know we have said that Hardman kind of gets a leg in there because he's that veteran voice. Now we yeah. saw Hardman play till end of that game last week. You know, he, he was playing the week three. Uh, third, beginning of third quarter uh, and, and, and entirely through the second quarter. But, like, is he maybe the surprise candidate? Because we signed him pretty late in free agency. Is he maybe the surprise candidate? Maybe they thought, okay, we cut Harmon. We don't really have that veteran voice in the locker room. Let's go get uh, Juju, who can be that veteran voice if we do cut Harmon. I mean, is that way maybe that's the way they try to – rationalize cutting Harmon with bringing another veteran guy who can be that veteran voice in the locker room. I don't know. I'm surprised. And I don't know. I, I have a feeling. I think I know who's going to get cut. I don't want it. I don't, I don't want it to come true. JD, my guy oh, Ross, oh, oh. but I have a feeling tomorrow is going to be very, I'm going to be, I might be surprised with it with a uh, few names who, who get cut from that, that room. I'm trying to brace myself for it, but mm-hmm. I might be surprised with some of the names who are cut from that room, given this Juju signing. Well, I, <laughs> I, I have I have some thoughts on that, um, but I, I do believe when when you have a guy like that, and I'm not just talking about Rasheed Rice t- teaching him. We're talking about teaching Sky Moore, talking about teaching Xavier Worthy. Uh, we're talking about still having a handle like how you you know conduct yourself, being a professional. Uh, those things are very important when you have a voice like that uh, that that can really you know temper attitudes or whatever else, right? You, you watch a guy, you know, what he's been doing, how he works. Uh, and, and so sometimes from some of the conversations, all right, that, you know, has was heard last year and things that were said was that some parts of the wide receiver room, there might have been a little immaturity there, okay? Might have been not enough of the work in or putting the effort in to get better. Um, not saying that this problem this year, but you wouldn't want to have a guy Who's not a burner? We got burners. We we got guys who could you know top take the top off the defense. We 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 have enough of those. Now we need a guy that can get open, settle in a zone. Who is a possession possession receiver, uh, who does a great job. We know that, right? If Hollywood is going to be out for an extended period of time, like you said, we don't quite know what that means, right? He could be out one, two, maybe the third game. We don't quite know, and it all depends on how how fast this healing process is going, um, uh, you know, for him. Uh, somebody said it. He's an insurance piece, great insurance piece. He's a guy, like I said, he caught what seventy nine balls for us, I think that that year, wasn't it? So in, incredible job, almost a thousand yards. If he didn't have a thousand, um, you know, I don't have the stats in front of me, but he was he was very productive. He was a very productive guy. Yeah, he may not be the same guy. We don't know it. We don't quite know where his ankle or his knee is at at this moment. What you can do is you can maintenance a guy like that and we some and look what people don't understand is this when you go to new england they're gonna run you into the ground bill belichick and those guys they don't care if you can practice or not they're gonna say get out there because we we paid you this money we expect to see you out there practice and in those guys will take a different approach to take care of and, and having maintenance a guy okay you don't have to take all the reps in practice get what you need to get you understand the offense we need for you to play on sunday and so He'll be able to do it. He'll have young guys behind him. Uh, but somebody posed a uh, an actually a, a solution uh, to some of the things that might be going on. I was like, that, that kind of makes a lot of sense. And I don't know if it's true or not, if they would do it, but I would actually like that. I think, actually agree with it. So they're going to bring seven. It's going to be seven wide receivers going to be on the run. I know everybody keeps saying six. We're going. It's going to be seven wide receivers we're carrying, okay? on the roster, all right? Uh, I think Harmon's going to be one of the guys. I don't think we get rid of him. Harmon's a guy that understands what he needs to do also, too. He's a fast guy. He's a returner. Uh, He brings a lot to the table. He can play multiple positions. And so we know he's a weapon. So Harmon, for me, was the fourth receiver. I know everybody was saying, you know, Justin Watson, I think Harmon is a guy that can do it all, special teams. He has all of that about him. Uh, Older veteran guy, they know him. Why well, get rid of a guy like you know that that has won Super Bowls with you? You know, you bring him back. This is home for him. Okay, I think he's a piece that is a consummate piece that's here. Uh, the guy you're talking about, Justin Ross, right? 
Is he the guy that's on the bubble? He, he, he could be. He definitely could be. Somebody said this, okay? And I, I like to give him credit uh, when I find out who it is. But he said, what if they decided to make RB3 Kadarius Tony? okay? Put uh, CEH on IR, Kadarius Tony as the third running back, and then you could keep a Justin Ross. Then you can make room for guys. If I'm not mistaken, let me just see if that's if, that, if that's enough, enough guys. Hold on. I am talking about Murray. Watch this guy. That's Ross. Armin. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah. Oh, that's still somebody out the door. Yeah, that's still tough, somebody out the door. Un- unless you also pair that parlay that with putting Hollywood on a PUP or something. Yeah, I, which you could. You can do. I, you know, I, I think. Uh, uh, I don't think they do it with Hollywood. I think he's a lot he's further along than what they're saying. Uh, but, but, so I'll get I'll do I'll do this. Okay, I'll do this. I could give you my seven wide receivers right now. Is that okay? If I if I give everybody my seven wide receivers, I'm thinking is there. Let's right. do it. All right. Rasheed Rice, Hollywood Brown, Xavier Worthy. Justin Watson, um, Hardman, Sky Moore, and Juju. Okay, that's that's the seven. That's what I'm looking at. Okay, uh, so that's 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 how I look at the seven wide receiver room right now. That's the seven guys in the wide receiver room. Um, Michael Romo says Ceh is back at practice. He is, but how far along is it? Like we don't we don't. You know, that's up in the air. That could be part of that insurance piece that we're talking about, right? So if he's not, then we're talking about the other two guys may be out. They may be out. But you have to have a guy, okay? Rasheed Rice is your one. Hollywood, absolutely worthy. Watson Sky, Juju, and Hardman. Those guys like that is going to carry you through where you need to, okay? Justin Ross has a skill set that is needed for the Chiefs. But thing is, I don't know how much of that skill set we're going to be utilizing. That's the only problem. That's the only issue. And so, Marcus, as much as we love to see back shoulder throws and balls throwing up in the air, they might just not have the need for it. Maybe they feel like they got enough there. And look, I'm I'm saying this. I, shoot. They may keep it. They may. There might be some shakeups that we just don't quite see. We just don't know that right now at this moment. We just know that Juju, when he came in, He's 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 there. Okay, he's a possession receiver. Rice, another guy. Okay. Hollywood, that's another thing that we don't quite know. We don't know exactly where his whole the condition of everything with his, you know, uh, you know, his collarbone is. Okay. Deviation. We don't quite know how good that is. So that's that's the thing. Uh it's gonna be a lot of things that we, you know, speculate, a lot of things coming up, but I do believe there's gonna be some type of a shakeup. Of guys being let go, the guys are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe let let this dude let him walk. So, what do you make of? Uh, I've seen someone just shoot this out today. Um, mm-hmm. Irv Smith Jr. is a guy who he was playing late in the games. Where yep. we, have, we have we we have three other tight ends that they're you know Gray, uh, Wiley, and Kelsey. I mean, and I don't think there's any dead money with uh, cutting Irv Smith. Could that be a possible guy? They they think they can sneak him onto their practice squad. If they release him. I mean. Uh, you talking about Irv or Smith, and then that, that opens up one other spot. Instead of keeping four tight ends, they keep three tight ends to add, like, keep another receiver, and yeah. then you, you use him in that fourth and role. I mean, I, I don't yeah. know. I'm trying to think of ways to try to sneak it because I feel like we talked about this before. If mm-hmm. Ross is waived, I don't think he's gonna be able to get to our practice squad. I, I think another team is gonna see that and, and not allow him to go back to our practice squad. I, I just don't think they can sneak him on there. <laughs> Here's the thing: there's a lot of talented receivers out there that's gonna get released. Okay. Uh, could we put him on practice squad? Sure. I think Rick Henderson has said, put Ross on the practice squad. Uh, is it possible he's gone in 48 hours? Maybe. There's a lot of talent the guys out there. The thing was, he wasn't, teams didn't pick him up in the draft. Cost of medical and all those different things and whatnot. And so it's like, okay, is he, is he all the way, is he all the way ready? When he came in the game, he didn't really get any expense, ex, extensive playing time, but he was ready. He got some playing time. So 
he I think he's polished to be on a team. So for somebody to utilize his talent, that's going to be the question. Okay, that's going to be the question of it. So, well, if I remember correctly, uh, he was highly sought after in the UDFA market. Um, we gave him pretty good amount of like guaranteed money to come to come sign with us. Uh, but I remember he was pretty sought after, and he chose to come to Kansas City over other options that were out there for him. Obviously, at the time, you know, we had that the, the MVS, the Juju, that was that off season, and we were yeah. able to, you know, uh, put him on the IR, get the corrective surgery on his foot, put him on IR. I mean, the one thing I will say that go, that bodes well for the people who are in the Ross camp, and I know it's going to be tough I mean, now that you have Juju. Now it's going to be tough to try to rationalize this, um, but they have, you know, the corrective surgery on his foot. Sticking with him throughout the uh, the arrest that he had last year, they've they they have there's a lot of history there of them trying to keep it together, um, and obviously a lot of people who are you know against Ross or people who are trying to be realistic about this, they've been posting that clip of the timeout call during that game uh, last week, and it's been told by many that Ross had a problem with a lot uh, getting lined up properly during training camp. Coaches yelling at him, having to talk to him during training camp, and then it came to fruition during the game against the Bears, where he didn't know where to line up. They had to call a timeout. And you see, Andy was pissed off when Andy calls a timeout. Uh, you see, when he calls timeout to the ref, you see he was agitated. Obviously, coaches don't like to burn timeouts; they don't need to. But if it's an ongoing issue, Andy's burning a timeout. He's pissed off about it. And I don't know if that's the reason he's not going to make the team. I'm just saying it's that kind of stuff. It's like, huh, you know, like, hey, man. Look, we, we we know very little. We we know very what we see, right? We we see them on film. We see them out there in the game. But other than that, the coaches are watching every single rep, okay? And so I'm telling you, if a guy's not lining up correctly and there is a snafu and, a, you know, a brain fart here and there, that can be a determinant factor. Absolutely it can. Absolutely it can. And so – like you said, you want to be in a position where you bring a guy out here and he don't know what he's doing. He's not lining up correctly. Not saying that's it. But I, I will say that it is cause for guys to get cut. It's always been that way. It has. Uh, I'm not, we're not saying that's the reason. If if it does happen, we, shoot, we don't even know. He might be safe. He might be safe. All we we over speculating like everything else. We we have no idea. So who who Right now, at this moment, I just gave you my seven, who I think it's going to be it. Um, but any team, I don't care who it is. It could be Justin Ross. It could be any of these guys that go somewhere else that's on the French for us. Uh, well, the teams pick them up. I mean, they're talented enough to play, right? So you can make a case for any of these guys that you that you put on, you know, on the cut. Will they pass waivers if you try to put them on a practice squad and all those different things, right? It's the same thing that anybody's going to try to pick up. So it's, it's kind of what it is, man. That's what we're facing right now. Yeah, tomorrow's going to be very interesting. And with this Juju signing, it made everything a lot like a lot more interesting because there might there's going to be some sexy names that come from this room. There could be trades for like future seventh round picks, sixth round picks, uh, kind of like we did with um, Smith Marset last year with Carolina. We, I think we got a six round pick or something from from them uh, after he yeah. showcased his dominance in that last preseason game, but. It's going to be very interesting, and uh, our, a lot of people are split on how we feel about the receiver room, but I think the one commonality is everyone trusts what Veach and Andy Reid are, are doing. So that's that's the way to go about it. Look, the way I, the way I look at it, and it, it's been happening, okay, uh, we, we, last time we won the last two Super Bowls, ain't we? And we, 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 had, we had Justin Ross on our roster for both those. <laughs> we did. We did. But we went to another one, you know, one one without him. But he went on the roster. That's true. So uh, I don't think he got a whole lot of playing time. He was on the roster, but he didn't get a whole lot of playing time, did he, Marcus? No, it was just a technicality. He was on the roster. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> maybe maybe he's a he's a rabbit foot, right? He's a, he's the one to do the three p. Uh, I think if you're if you're talking about doing something like that, you have an offense uh, that can move change and move the ball. Um, you bring a guy like Juju in, okay. So you don't have this offensive stall where guys are not be able to find the ball. Don't know where you bring a guy like Juju, move the chains. He's a move the chains guy, okay. And he doesn't have to be a burner. He doesn't can run a four or six, but he knows how to get open. He knows how to be the fastest four or six guy there is out there. If he's running four or six, he, heck, he still might run a four or four. I don't know. We just had to find out. Yeah, Sibby face. I spotted that moment too when I see a guy throw his hands up. That was Andy. Andy throwing his hands up after calling a timeout after the. Uh... Yeah. yeah. Hey man, what like what are we doing out here? Like, 
you know, I get if you didn't hear it in the huddle. But we sitting over here trying to, like you said, burn a, a timeout that is, shoot, a very important one. The end of the game, or some point of it, can be tiresome. And look, <laughs> the NFL doesn't suffer any fools. I'm just letting you know. They, they had patience for guys, but they want guys to get things right. Okay? That's how important it is. And so this cut down, this roster cut down, they're trying to make sure they have the right 53 men, okay, to go for this three P to win the entire thing. And so uh, that's how it works, man. They're trying to find guys that's ready to play football, who are dedicated, who's 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 tip top, football IQ, getting everything right. They're they're not sitting back saying, We're not going through all the headache we did last year. Okay. It wasn't fun for Patrick. Patrick's like, hey, man, it's not fun. If guys over here is not getting it, it's not fun for me to do this. I'm not going to be yelling at anybody during this season. Everybody needs to be on top of the game. So, and Quite frankly, the Juju Smith, I know everyone's trying to make sense of it by saying, oh, it's insurance. It is insurance, but for different reasons. So the Rice, we don't know when that suspension is going to hit. And a lot of people don't think it will happen this year, but it could happen this year, but we don't know. We're, we're at the mercy of the NFL in Texas on that. So Rice, that's a mystery situation. Xavier Worthy is a rookie. He's been hindered by a hamstring all throughout uh, uh, the offseason in camp. He's also a small guy, so we don't know what's going to happen with him. Things can happen in the NFL. Small guy, too. So that's a, that's a mystery in its own way. And yeah. then Hollywood Brown, already off to an uh, injury. And he's also had injury problems in his past, too. So right after that, it's three guys out. So let's say those three guys are out. We, we never go get Juju. They were left with Watson, Moore, Juju. Uh, not Juju. Uh, Watson, Moore, Hardman, Ross, KT. Pretty much back to last year again. And without Rice this time, let's say he, you know, he gets suspended. So this is just a another guy that we can trust, that Mahomes can trust, that Nagy can trust. If God forbid anything happens to those guys, so I, I, I love it for that reason. Yeah, injuries happen all the time. We know that, and so you got to have a guy in here that that is good enough that there's no drop off to saying, okay, well, what do we do now? With Juju, you don't have to ask that question. What do we do now? We got the answer. So, hi everybody, thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts.